Hello my dear friends, you're in the Military Summary channel and in this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first let's talk about the visit of Ursula von der Leyen on the territory of Ukraine. She came to Kyiv this morning and she is planning to talk with Zelensky about upcoming winter. The heating season is about to start and Russia continues to target energy infrastructure. We will help Ukraine in its bold efforts and I came here to discuss European support progress on G7 lending. Yes, the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian energy facilities and Ukrainians have few options either to force the Russians to stop by signing peace agreement on Ukrainian terms or to continue to suffer. As for the first plan about Ukrainian plan, Victor plan, the plan was revealed. A source in, in the office of president stated uh, that Andrei Yermak believes that the main task for Ukraine is to draw NATO into a direct confrontation with Russia. This is what will allow Ukraine to join the alliance and win the war. We have no alternative scenarios. Reserves and equipment are at a critical levels. We will not be able to withstand a protected war, which means we need to look for ways to escalate the war and provoke the Kremlin. And you know that everything explains uh, this situation. The, all these statements explains the situation that took place in the city of Tarapets on the territory of Russia I reminded that a few days ago something attacked this warehouse and as a result of this something attack huge ammo depot was destroyed currently we start receiving the updates and satellite fresh satellite pictures of the consequence of attack and as you can see the entire warehouse was completely destroyed and once again I'll remind you that according to different sources this attack was conducted from the territory of the Baltic states which are basically already Already members of NATO. Maybe this is exactly the first steps, the first uh, things, the first events that NATO countries completed with the purpose to show the entire alliance that the Russia will not be able to show resistance to these type of attacks. So let's see what is going to be next. But obviously, Ukraine and its allies go so very, very tough and very, very dangerous way. Now let's begin with the Kursk offensive, another place where Ukraine tried to show the Western countries that it is easy to attack territory of Russia. But as for the current situation at the ground, we say that the Ukrainians are losing. Let's uh, first talk about Glushkova offensive. During the previous nights and during the previous morning, the Ukrainians made a lot of attempts to break through the Russian defense belt with the use of a significant number of armored vehicles and personal carriers and infantry. The Russian sources are saying that there were up to 10 armored vehicles and around 100 soldiers, but those attacks were repelled by the Russian forces. Ukrainians suffered losses and were forced to fall back. Currently, according to information we have, the Ukrainians are trying to uh, bypass the city of Visola and to enter the road between Visola and the city of Glushkova and to begin moving further in the northeastern direction. Once again, every single attack was repelled by the Russians and we have from Ukrainian side just one video. In this video we can see the Russian personal carrier that was located in the northern part of the village and that was attacked several times by the FPV drone uh, forces of the armed forces of Ukraine and basically destroyed. Uh, Ukrainians also can't move further until they finish the situation and handle with the critical situation in the village by the name of Krasnak Tyabarovsky. These territories since the the beginning of Ukraine offensive uh, is under complete control of the armed forces of Russian Federation. The Ukrainians made a lot of attempts to take under control uh, this small settlement, but every single attack was repelled by the Russians. And since that Ukrainians currently out of reinforcement reserves and the manpower, and they decided to take this village under control just by the use of drones. If you remember, just yesterday we were talking about robots that Ukrainians were using to attack Russian forces, but later we got additional details that the Russians managed to capture those that robot first to, to damage with FPV drone and then to capture so it's like a obviously significant loss and now we start continuing to sync videos of how the Ukrainians were FPV flamethrowering Russian positions along the tree lines so Krasnoktyabrsky the village of Krasnoktyabrsky is under complete and strong Russian control so as for now uh, the Ukrainians haven't managed to achieve uh, the results they were planning to achieve now let's talk about the Suja Suja direction we have very important updates that are coming from the line between 
the villages of Darina and uh, Sverdlika. As you can see, we have a uh, lots of icons exactly in this area. We don't have geolocations, we don't have videos that confirm additional Russian progress, but we have a uh, lots of reports from very reliable sources. The Russian armed forces have liberated the settlements of Darina and Nikolaeva Darina in the Kursk region. This was reported by the Russian government uh, media press Ria Novosti and also by the major general Apti Aladu um, Alaudi enough so these territory these two villages were captured later we got additional map updates according to different pro-russian mappers and as you can see the russians established liberated or established control not just over villages but also managed to reach the outskirts of the village by the name of sverdlikova so summarizing everything we can make a conclusion that by the morning of the 20th of september the russians already established control and had strong positions exactly along the this line so this is very deep inside of the territories that used to be under Ukraine control of course if the Russians continue their offensive the Ukrainians can be completely defeated and the most dangerous parts the Ukrainians may be encircled by the Russians if the Russians are able to move further in the direction of the village by the name of Libetivka once again if the Russians can take under control this village as well this is going to be complete disaster for those Ukrainians who are currently located in the area between the village Villages of Koreneva, Lubimovka, Tostuluk, Nova Ivanovka, Alexandria, Leonidova, Mala Lokna, St Stara, Nova Sarochna, and Pagripki. So, this territory and the Ukraine forces who are currently located here will be encircled by the Russians. And approximately, it probably this is exactly what the Russians are trying to do. So, let's wait for additional day because if the Russians reach the outskirts of Sverdlikova, then they will try to push and they will try to speed up the offensive, trying to encircle as many as possible and to force and to make panic among Ukrainian soldiers. As for the eastern flank, we continue receiving a lot of videos of how the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces. Uh, probably the Russians are trying to achieve several goals. One of them is to pin down the Ukrainians, not to allow redeploy reinforcements to stabilize the western flank. And another goal is to hold the Ukrainians as long as possible and to encircle them. Now let's move further and let's talk about uh, the Pakrovsk direction where we have additional updates. First let's talk about about Kurahova area. During the previous night, the sources published fire anomalies in the territory. As you can see, the territory is covered with significant number of fire anomalies, which confirms that there are very heavy clashes and that the Russians are pushing. As for Ukraine's gearing direction, we still haven't received anything or uh, we still haven't received any reliable source map update about the eastern part of the city, so we are going to keep this area as is. But I'll remind that just yesterday we were talking that as a result of offensive, the Russians took under control uh, the eastern part of this small town. Uh, the Russian sources and pro-Ukrainian mappers reported that uh, Russians continue maintaining the line of combat contact in the fields between Nivoyska and the city, the village of Zhlanna Druha. These territories were captured by the Russians and I would like to point your attention that according to pro-Ukrainian mappers, uh, the uh, nearest Ukrainian positions are taking place along the road between Krasnogorovka and Zhlanna Druha. So, uh, the territory that, according to the military summary map, uh, to the north and to the east of this yellow line, according to pro-Ukraine mappers, is already marked as a gray zone or contested area. Uh, the Ukrainians have no positions to the to the right and on to the top of this line. Everything uh, Ukrainians have just here between Zhlanne, Zaryanne and the farms in the northwestern part of Krasnogorovka, which is very interesting and very important because, as we can see, the Ukrainians are finishing the process of evacuation of their personal and vehicles. Now let's move further and let's talk about the western direction, western Ukraine's direction. We have two icons. According to very reliable mappers, the Russians as a result of fast lightning attack managed to take under control the coal mine and the landfill to the west of Ukraine. We're not going to change the map yet. Let's wait for additional updates. But if this information is correct, then the Russians managed to cut a supply road between Silidova and Sukurine. 
and to get closer to a complete encirclement of the Ukrainians. The next uh, step, the next target of the Russians is to expand their foothold to in the northwestern direction and the southwestern direction with the purpose to attack Tsukurina from behind and to attack uh, Silidova also from the south. Uh, we have just one geolocation and in this video we can see another Ukrainian vehicle that was attacked by the Russian FPV drone. Once again we'll remember the rule where the Russian drones are moving, the main Russian army is going to move during the next few days. Let's go to the Pakrovsk area. As you can see we haven't received anything. Pakrovsk is under very heavy. As usually we continue receiving additional pictures so of the consequences of Russian attack without any changes on the ground. Zelensky acknowledged that the situation for the Ukraine armed forces is currently very difficult in the Pakrovsk and Kurahovsk directions. From this territory we have just one video how the Ukrainians were trying to counterattack the northwestern part of Novogrodovka, but the Ukrainian personal carrier was damaged and destroyed by FPV drone attack. Let's go to the Taryetsk agglomeration. The Russians managed to improve their positions a little bit to the west of New York. And as I understand, as a result of clashes, the Russians took under control this stronghold. As for the citadel itself, we have small changes on the ground. Also, according to pro-Ukrainian mappers, the Russians managed to improve their positions a little bit further deep inside of the territory of Taryetsk. Let's talk about the Chasov Yard direction. We haven't received anything special, just a lot of videos from the Ukrainian sources of how they were trying to slow down and to destroy the Russians. You know that currently the Russians are storming the city of Chasavyara from the northeastern direction, from the village of Kalinovka, and the Russians managed to introduce significant number of forces. Now the Ukrainians are just trying to slow the Russians down. In this video we can see Russian T-80 tank that was destroyed as a result of several FPV drone attacks. Uh, now let's move to the Kupins direction. We have some changes on the ground. Uh, in this video, uh, to the east of Nevska, we can see the video we can see the episodes of how the Ukrainians were attacking the Russian forces. I'll remind you that just yesterday, uh, pro-Ukrainian mappers shown significant progress of the armed forces of Russian Federation towards the village or towards the river of Zheribets. And now we have geolocation that confirmed this progress. Let's increase the numbers of dates. So we are talking about uh, uh, this. This is it. This is the, uh, not maybe, not maybe yesterday, maybe in the beginning of the week there was a report. Yes, this is it. We got this report somewhere on the 17th of September. A Russian big advance uh, for to in direction of Nevska. And, and today on the 20th of September, we got geolocation that confirmed this. Furthermore, according to uh, neutral mappers, the Russians managed to improve their positions around Makievka. And as a result of clashes, the Russians took on to control the farms. So most likely today or a few few days later, the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation will, will confirm additional Russian progress and will um, officially confirm the control over the village of Makievka. Uh, now let's move uh, further and let's discuss the situation that currently is taking place in the Middle East. As you know, the Israeli forces began their uh, special operation in the southern part of Lebanon. We start receiving significant number of uh, geolocations and icons exactly from this territory. Very heavy as Israeli bombardment targets Lebanon and the south, the second wave had more than 70 airstrikes in less than uh, 20 minutes. We have some geolocations that confirm significant damage that the Israeli aviation forces have already damaged to the, uh, south, to the southern part of Lebanon. Currently, it's very difficult to understand what exactly the Israeli forces are planning to do. Some sources are saying that this is just a small victory that the United States and the Democratic administration is trying to get before the end of the president election campaign so very short very fast victory is always good uh, to the current president of the united states of america maybe this is exactly what we can see right now maybe this is just the political games be between the official lebanon uh, power and the forces in hezbollah uh, we don't know for sure but obviously sooner or later we're gonna understand everything but if we compare if we compare the situation in the south in lebanon with the situation in gaza 
uh, and we must admit that say most likely Israel is preparing themselves before the full-scale offensive operation that will not be limited just by the south and Lebanon obviously this operation will be limited by probably the capital of uh, uh, of uh, Lebanon we are talking about Beirut we have a lot of videos from the city as well from the capital of Lebanon we can see the Israeli aircrafts that are flying above the capital and this is something like psychology operation trying to force people to be scared and so on of course we have official reaction of the hezbollah leader and he stated that this is a declaration of war by israel furthermore he stated that there is no doubt that we have been subjected to a major security and humanitarian blow unprecedented in the history of the resistance in lebanon furthermore we have report that lebanese front will not stop until the war in gaza ends no matter what happens we will not stop serving as an area of support so for now we still haven't received any uh, more or less strong reaction from the iran and from other countries but obviously everybody is preparing and obviously is, get, is bringing more forces and uh, I'm not sure that see, if the Western countries uh, believes that this operation will end, end very soon by the end of the present elections most likely this war is going to take years and that's it for the short video military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye